How in the world did the Inquisition lead to the invention of the vacuum pump, and what does that have to do with electricity? Well, I'll tell you, and along the way, I'll talk about heavy air, an impatient duke, a freaked out Galileo, unfortunate facial hair, an impressive demonstration with 24 horses, and a really stupid demonstration involving a stinky ball and a stick. Ready? Let's go. Electricity, 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 electricity. This story begins in 1633 when the 70-year-old Galileo is in serious trouble. The religious leaders in Rome were very upset with him for saying the earth circles the sun and therefore is not the center of the universe. In fact, he had to prostrate himself in front of the inquisitors general to denounce the heresy of having held that the sun is the center of the world. Unable to study the stars, Galileo decided to collect the last 30 years of non-planetary physics and publish it as a book. The religious leaders in Rome didn't know it, but this would be more revolutionary and, dare I say it, heretical. Galileo did experiments on motion. Think of him dropping balls off the side of the Tower of Pisa. And he started to think about air resistance, and then he started to think about air. What was it and did it have a weight? Galileo decided to solve this problem directly by actually measuring the weight of air on a scale. He took a bottle with a straw and a valve in it and he weighed it on a balance scale. Then he pumped in extra air and the bottle weighed a few grams of sand more. When he released the air, it weighed a few grams of sand less. So air weighs something, but how much compared to say water? He then filled the same bottle three quarters of the way with water without letting any of the air escape. So the air gets smushed and he weighed it. Then he released the air and weighed it again. By assuming that the volume of air that escaped was about the same as the volume of water he put in there, he got that air is about 400 times lighter than water. That doesn't sound like much, does it? And it isn't much for a bottle. However, think about the weight of air in a big building, say the Parthenon in Rome. Imagine you took all the air from inside the Parthenon and measured it on a scale. How much would just the air weigh? One pound? Ten pounds? A hundred pounds? Just the air in that building weighs over, ready? 150,000 pounds, which is crazy and caused Galileo to panic. He decided that air in a bottle has weight, but once you release it, it's weightless. This is a mistake and a doozy. See, in 1630, the Grand Duke of Florence was trying to pump water uphill, but all the pumps conked out at about 33 feet. And no one knew why. Well, it turned out Galileo had the solution, and it all had to do with that heavy air. Three months before he died, Galileo hired a brilliant assistant with a stupidly oversized mustache and goatee, and the lyrical name of Evangelista Torricelli. Torricelli ignored Galileo's freak out about the weightless air. He thought air was always pushing on us, but in every direction, so we never noticed it. In fact, he said, we live submerged at the bottom of an ocean of air. Torricelli decided the reason suction pumps work is not because the suction pulls, but because the air pushes and the vacuum does not push back. In 1644, Torricelli came up with an experiment with mercury to demonstrate air pressure. He used mercury instead of water because it is 13 times more dense than water, and if water can make a column 33 foot tall, mercury only makes a column 2.5 feet tall, which is a much more manageable size. Torricelli took a three foot long tube and filled it with mercury, covered the end, and upended it into another container of mercury. He then removed the cover and a half a foot of mercury fell out of the tube, leaving a gap at the top full of nothing, as no air could get in. Torricelli had made a vacuum without suction, and he made a device of magical properties with a column of mercury suspended against gravity. The air is pressing on the mercury in the cup, but nothing is pushing back at the top of the tube. So the air is what's holding the mercury in place. In fact, air pressure can change if you change altitude or if a storm is about to start. And when that happens, the height of the mercury also changes, which is why 
Pressure is often measured in mmHg for millimeters of mercury, or in Tor, named after our fella Torricelli. Also, the device he invented is called a barometer for pressure meter. And now we get to a German politician named Otto von Goerke. Goerke was actually the first person to think of using Torricelli's tube to predict storms, which makes him the father of meteorology. But he was particularly interested in the vacuum on the top. He wondered if instead of having gravity remove a bit of liquid and create a vacuum, if he could just use a water pump and create a vacuum that way. Sometime in late 1640s, Gurka filled a wooden casket with water, closed and sealed it, and then removed the water with a pump he borrowed from the fire brigade. Unfortunately, the air just seeped in through the wood. He then tried it with a metal container, and the metal container promptly imploded. Finally, he created two 20-inch diameter, extra-thick copper hemispheres that he fit together in a sphere, and it worked. Still, he was frustrated because no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't remove all the water. In 1650, he had a thought. Did he need water at all? He then modified his pump to remove air instead of water. Gurica invented a device that was basically a piston in a cylinder with two valves. When he pulled on the piston, the air expanded into the cylinder. When he pushed on the piston, the air flowed into the atmosphere. Now, when he used his pump, these spheres stuck together like superglue. But as soon as the air was let in, they would fall apart. Just like Torricelli, Gurike was demonstrating the power of air. See, when he removed the air from inside the sphere, the air on the outside was still pressing, but nothing was pressing back on the inside. Therefore, in order to separate the hemispheres, you had to add as much force as the air has. This is a surprisingly large force. Gurike began doing impressive demonstrations with strongmen playing tug-of-war on the sphere. He even upped the wow factor with two teams of horses dramatically pulling on the hemispheres. You might wonder what this has to do with electricity. Well, that's coming. See, despite the fact that the vacuum pump was a practical device and vital for the development of the combustion engine, Gurike wasn't interested in practicality. He was interested in theory. See, he, like Galileo before him, believed the Earth circled around the sun. He also believed that space was full of nothing, or space is a vacuum. He built the vacuum pump to prove that vacuums can exist. Therefore, Gurike had experiments and theories to show the vacuum of space, and he had experiments and theories to demonstrate the air that we all swim in. What he was missing was an experiment for the Earth. And that's where he came up with a very strange idea. He modeled the Earth with a ball of stinky sulfur on a stick, and he modeled gravity with static electricity. Gurike never said why he used sulfur. It's really hard to work with, and it smells like rotten eggs. The only thing I can think of is that volcanoes sometimes smell sulfuric, so maybe he thought that's why it was a good model for the Earth. Anyway, he rubbed his Earth and picked up leaves and feathers. By the way, this is a ridiculous theory and has no relationship to how gravity actually works. However, for all his smelly play acting, Gurike figured out something new about electricity. He detected that after a while, the small objects fell off the sphere. Moreover, they didn't just fall off, they repel off the sphere and can be chased around the room. In other words, electrics can repel as well as attract. Gurike's book was very popular and inspired the study of vacuums in Europe. His work on this wonderful globe, however, were mostly ignored, probably because it was ridiculous. However, most people in Europe knew that electrics could repel because of him. It was actually Gurike's work on vacuums that inspired the next breakthrough in electricity. A shaken barometer steered Isaac Newton's poor abused assistant to create the first fluorescent lamp almost 100 years before the invention of the battery and well over 200 years before the invention of the first commercial fluorescent light bulb. And that story is next time on The Secret History of Electricity. Electricity, 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 electricity. 
Thanks for watching my video. Remember, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you don't like it, give it an ironic thumbs up. Have a good day.